Dear Nathan, thank you so much for your note. I was born and raised in Victoria, and I'm an advocate for phenylketonuria, or PKU for short, and very active in the community. This post is gathering so much attention in our PKU world. It truly feels like a dream. Right now, I test my blood at home, place the blood on filter paper, and mail it to the newborn screening laboratory in Vancouver. It takes 10 days to get my results back. If my levels are high, damage is already being done. This device will change that. The reason why this is so important to me in particular is that, as a woman living with PKU, I have to be very careful about my maternal PKU diet. I have to keep my levels down for three to six months prior to conceiving, as well as during the pregnancy, as a baby that is born with high maternal PKU levels can be born disabled, handicapped, or even deformed. For this reason, my husband and I have put off having a child until I could test my levels at home with a device. This has been my dream, to have a healthy pregnancy and baby. I want nothing more than to be a mother, and this device helps me do that. I am so excited for the future, so thank you again. I received this email in late May of the last school year from a PKU patient here in BC named Amanda. This was after she learned about my work into PKU management and my development of an at-home test that helps PKU patients stay on top of their condition. Now, you may be wondering, what in the world is PKU? Well, PKU is short for phenylketonuria, a genetically inherited disorder where the body cannot process the amino acid phenylalanine. It is fairly rare, affecting only one in every 50,000 people worldwide. In a healthy individual, an enzyme converts the amino acid phenylalanine into another amino acid called tyrosine. But if you have PKU, your body can't make that conversion happen, and instead, phenylalanine builds up. If left untreated, it can have a huge impact, that is, cause huge damage to a person's body, potentially leading to severe neurological defects and motor degradation. Loss of IQ, loss of memories, mental retardation, confinement to a wheelchair, loss of limb function, the list goes on and on. Just like Amanda said. There is no cure for PKU, and no way to treat symptoms once they develop. The only way a patient can deal with their condition is by preventing symptoms from developing in the first place. Phenylalanine is commonly found in high-protein foods, so a low-protein or a low-phenylalanine diet is the only way PKU patients can try to stay on top of their condition. But with any diet, it's hard to know whether you're following it strictly enough or not, or in the case of PKU patients, how much phenylalanine is in their body. This is a problem that they deal with on a daily basis for their entire lives. Amanda accurately described the only way PKU patients can currently test their levels at home, by sending a blood sample to a lab and waiting up to two weeks for results. In that two-week period, high levels of phenylalanine could already be doing damage to their body. As well, a two-week wait time makes self-correcting a diet a huge challenge, something that is critical to PKU patients' health. This problem in current PKU management was also identified by the company Innocentive, which issued a global challenge on behalf of the National PKU Alliance of the United States for developing an at-home test for phenylalanine. Upon hearing about this void in current PKU management techniques, I decided I would try to fill this gap and produce an at-home test. My goal is for it to be rapid, reusable, inexpensive, and run off a urine sample, not a blood sample. If successful, I would have a huge impact on PKU patients, maybe even around the world. Now you're asking, well, how does a grade 11 student even think about tackling a real-world problem <laughs> such as this? And I'll admit, it's unusual. And the answer to this is science fair. My science fair journey started in a Science 9 classroom at Glen Lyon Notebook School, where, as part of the course, I was required to produce a science fair project. I took that project to the Vancouver Island Regional Science Fair, held annually here at the University of Victoria, and then on to the Canada-wide Science Fair, or the National Science Fair, which was that year held in Lethbridge, Alberta. Now, I did win a silver medal, but that's not the important part. 
What was important were the awe-inspiring projects I saw other students producing. Possible treatments for cancer, new types of batteries, fundamental theorems for physics. It was truly mind-blowing work, and when I returned home, I asked myself, what is stopping me from doing this kind of work here in Victoria? I went back to the National Science Fair the following year with a slightly different project, one of detecting multiple types of tumor-based cancer through a urine sample. Now, I had graciously been allowed to work at a University of Victoria chemistry lab under the supervision of Dr. Fraser Hoff and the mentorship of my science teacher from school, Aaron Dallin. But I wasn't satisfied. My ultimate goal was to create something like a pregnancy test, but instead for cancer, where from a urine sample, a simple color change would indicate the presence of tumors in the body. In trying to make this work, I tried to do a color change test, because that was the easiest way to do it. And in doing these experiments, I randomly tried phenylalanine, one of the 20 essential amino acids. I had no idea at the time that it was a biomarker for a huge and awful condition that needed worldwide attention. When my color change tests started working better for phenylalanine than they did for cancer, this started me on a path toward developing a management system for PKU patients. Now, to tackle this challenge, I broke it down into two key parts. First, I had to develop a chemical protocol to identify the presence of phenylalanine from a urine sample. Ideally, this would be a color change because it's perhaps the easiest way to determine the outcome of a chemical test, especially for the untrained eye. Then, because my goal is for this to be used as an at-home test, I would have to devise a device or somehow house my chemical protocol in something so the average PKU patient who may or may not have motor difficulties, could run the test on their own. So first, the color change. Recent studies had pointed toward gold nanoparticles as an easy way of producing color changes because they appear purple in water. But initial tests produced no good results, as phenylalanine had no effect on the color. I then read a scientific article about how you can synthesize or produce gold nanoparticles from scratch using gold chloride in a base. Fortunately for me, this worked perfectly with phenylalanine, as the addition of phenylalanine to gold chloride in a base made a solution go from clear to dark purple. This was exactly the color change I had in mind, but there was a problem. I had to make sure it worked in a complex biological medium, like urine, and it didn't. A common compound in all of our urine, called creatinine, actually blocked the color change. So even though there was plenty of phenylalanine in the sample, the solution would remain colorless. This was a huge problem because a PKU patient might have life-threatening levels of phenylalanine in their body, but the test would still produce a negative result. This meant I had to filter my urine sample. And to do this, I used a process called SPE, or solid phase extraction. And briefly how this works is you push urine through a solid filter, and all the compounds in urine will stick to the filter, and then you push through different solutions afterwards. In each solution, different compounds in that filter unstick themselves and are washed away. After six different solutions, all that was left in my filter was phenylalanine. Now, I'm sorry, and bear with me here, but let's say that all of you are parts of human urine. <laughs> and this hall is the filter. With the first push of solution, let's say I say all people with brown hair stand up and leave. You can't come back. Then with the next push, now it's all people with the blue eyes, until at the end of six steps, there's only one person left in the audience. In my case, that was phenylalanine. I then added my gold chloride in a base to my filter, and the filter itself changed color. At this point, I was really happy with the chemistry, as I had identified the presence of phenylalanine and also made it work in a urine sample. But the problem was is that this SPE, or solid phase extraction process, was very complicated and not at all suited to an at-home test run by a patient. This made the device I was going to house my chemical protocol in even more vital. So I turned my attention to designing the device, and I chose to 3D print it because 3D printing allows for easy changes to design as well as a short and rapid production cycle. I was very fortunate to have the support of Warren Strom of Revolution 3D Printers to aid me in this process. Over the course of five months, five different prototypes were built, analyzed, and improved upon until we arrived at the final design. 
So this is the device that I designed. As you'll see, there's a center column and then seven outer syringes. The seven are for each step in the SPE process. The patient would put their urine into the center column, which is where this filter is. In the lid, there are two rollers at different heights. One, two. On the top of each of the syringes is a slanted wedge. I'm not sure if you can see that in the footage. There's a slanted wedge, so as the patient turns the cap, it pushes that syringe down. Underneath, the liquid in that syringe would go through a tube, through a one-way valve, and with the same pressure, through the filter. The patient does this seven times, and after seven steps, they look inside and see what the color of the filter is. The more purple, the more phenylalanine in their body. I also designed the device to be reusable, as PKU varies from patient to patient. Some might have to test every week, some every two weeks, in severe cases, some every three days. So I've designed it with a disposable insert, so that each time the PKU patient wants to run a test, they purchase a new filter and all the required chemicals at once. This means that they only have to buy the overall device once, and each time they run a test, it's a new insert. As you can see, this device successfully fulfills the goals I had for this project. It's rapid, takes about 10 minutes to run. Reusable, there's an insert that can be taken in and out. It's inexpensive, production costs are very, very small, and it runs off a urine sample, not a blood sample. But this is just one more step in a long journey, and is by no means a finished product. There are a plethora of potential improvements to be made, whether that's the device itself or the underlying chemistry. Either way, my end goal and dream is for this to be used in the homes of PKU patients around the world, making a concrete difference in their lives. Last spring, I filed a provisional patent on my device, and this last summer, I've spent it in the lab working on PKU management. What my final product will look like, I have no idea. But like Amanda, I'm very excited for the future. A favorite quote of mine is one by George Bernard Shaw, and it reads, people who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. <laughs> and this just doesn't apply to one fairly ambitious high school student. It really applies to us all. There will always be people who say it cannot be done for a variety of reasons. There's not enough time, not enough resources, or it's simply not possible. Persevering through these challenges can not only help ourselves, but it can also help people we don't even know we are impacting. People like Amanda, who have new hope that a management system is being developed so she and people like her can live their lives to the absolute fullest. So I challenge all of you, don't be one of the people who say it cannot be done. Instead, be one of the doers. And if not, well, then please step aside, because we have work to do. Thank you very much.